Hey, wake up, you f no, no. Who's there? Show yourself! Whoa, man! Be careful with that! Those days can knock someone out in one hit! A banana? I am your long-lost friend, Pascal, and I am here to help you with your journey of becoming the richest man in the world. Yeah, so this is what happens when you eat Taco Bell after 1 a.m. Stay focused, dork. Money. Stay focused on the money. Right, right. The, the money. So how are we gonna get me rich? Well, for that, we'll need to take a look at my friend Pedro. Why? Because he can show you the way to wealth, and I must help you on your quest for no reason until the end of the video. No. Yes? No. Yes. Still no? Yes. So, yes. No. But you said yes. Yes. So do you want to look at the game? No. This gag is getting old. What do you mean, no? Have you ever woken up to a random talking banana asking you to review a video game? <laughs> Now wasn't that just the most amazing, artistic, stunning, graceful piece of work you've ever played? What the f did I just play? Wasn't it clear, my friend? No, what? Wait a minute, who developed this game? Oh, everything makes sense now. What? Why? Because Devolver Digital is the same company that produced Hotline Miami. You have to understand that Hotline Miami was quite the uh, trip. It was a fast-paced, top-down shooter that went a little over the top with its emphasis on a particular substance that was used a lot in the 80s and 90s. And see, my friend Pedro takes a lot of the same beats. The story of both games were super weird. But at least my friend Pedro is kinda understandable. You are a mass silent protagonist. Because of course the progression of main characters in video games can't evolve since 1985. Shut up, this is my story summary who wakes up in the basement of a mafia storage complex by your floating banana friend, Pedro. I'm gonna have to stop you right there, Pascal. <laughs> this opening is just too ridiculous, and it completely pulls me out because I'm just way too confused. Yes, but it gives you intrigue as to what the story of our hero is, and how he got there as he has amnesia. I mean, maybe, but Pedro's dialogue is just too distracting, but I'll come back to him in a second. Discover that the mob boss, Mitch the Butcher, wants you dead for some reason, so you have to fight your way out of the complex. Pedro leads you out of the complex and into a retirement town for old mobsters where you have to find a motorcycle to escape. Mitch chases you in his sausage truck, subtle, where he is swiftly defeated. Pedro and you escape to a community named Noel, which is under the control of a man named Denny, not to be confused with the restaurant Denny's, and his army of bounty hunters. Just as we can get comfortable though, Denny informs his hunters that a mysterious contractor has stated that you are their next target. You fight your way through the bounty hunters and Denny informs you that his contractor was his sister Ophelia, who is the controller of the internet. One grows sewer level later and we confront Ophelia. However, right before we can defeat her in a climactic battle, we discover that we are actually Ophelia's brother. See, Pedro helped you erase your memory so you could kill your family without any guilt, with Mitch being your father and Denny and Ophelia being your siblings. But with this information coming to life, Pedro tries to end yours. You resist, and then in a final battle that is... That, you defeat Pedro and remove your mask to reveal... I'm sorry, my potassium friend, but what the f was the ending that I just played? Isn't it obvious, my slow-witted friend? It's supposed to explain that Pedro is a figment of your imagination all along. Oh, no, wait, I, I knew that when we played that trampoline section halfway through the game. But Kevin, it's so clever. So does that mean that you're a figment of my imagination? Don't get any ideas, mother -fucker. Plus, you'll still be poor if I'm gone. Fine, I'll let you stick around, but can we at least have some snacks or something? I'm getting pretty hungry. This story just feels sloppy. I understand that we're supposed to be just as confused as our character, and it all makes sense with a twist at the end, but it just falls flat. This is because of the tension in the game, or rather the lack thereof. And the main way to do this is for us to feel invested in our quest. But what is our quest in the game? It starts out with an escape, and then another escape, and then a revenge story? There are three solid arcs here that one could use through the entire game, but they don't take that approach with it, and it feels very choppy. Another thing that didn't land for me was the characters in this game. 
there are only four characters in the game, Mitch, Danny, Ophelia, and Pedro. All the villains are super one-dimensional with not much personality, so the game leads pretty hard on the banana for the jokes and its personality, but it slips and falls hard. <laughs> banana jokes. Pedro is just annoying. He doesn't say or do much, and when he does, he is saying dialogue that a high executive writer believes gamers talk like in this day and age. It feels thin, and I personally didn't care for him. Which is a shame because there's so much one could do with a talking banana that has extra dimensional powers. But that's not what we got. I can't help but feel like this narrative and characters were conceptualized after they made the levels. But fuck about worrying about that. We have to hurry to a sewer. <laughs> then a storage complex. Oh, stop and it, then my dreams. Fucking stop it. Just like the story, the set pieces in this game kind of jump around a lot. One minute you're driving on a highway, gunning down motorcycles, and then the next you're in some dream world fighting the haters. Usually, I'm all for a change of scenery, but when the narrative complements the reason behind the change. Here, it felt like a new area popped up because the devs felt like it did. And not having a solid reason to flow from area to area makes the narrative feel that much messier. No one cares about the story in games anyways, Kevin. Have you seen the masterpiece that's called Pong? Video games don't need a story to be relevant. Yeah, that's where you're wrong. Games have evolved so far in our industry now that even series that didn't have storylines can now have full-fledged narratives and main characters. To say that the video game industry is just about gameplay in this day and age is just a ridiculous and imperspective view on the industry. Thanks for that awesome, long-winded speech, bro. But let's keep it rolling. How was the gameplay? Now this is the reason to play my friend Pedro. This game gives a whole new meaning to acrobatic shoot-'em-ups. You run and gun through tight 2D hallways with a large variety of weapons ranging from Glock pistols, to sniper rifles, to f***ing SMGs. However, my friend Pedro adds two big gameplay elements that keep the gunfights engaging. First being the acrobatic half of the aforementioned genre. You can parkour, parkour all over the place in several ways ranging from wall jumps to rolling on the floor. These abilities add some really cool level designs and they take full advantage of it. Like, there was a point in the internet levels where I figured that we were done with new level designs, and the game was just gonna do what other games do and throw older versions of levels that are harder at me. But no, whole new physics and guns were added in, and this was always a treat because I could always slow down time if I didn't understand the new physics and weapons. And there's the second big game design. My friend Pedro gives you the power to slow down time and plan your strategy out for the room you're about to put more holes in than Midnight put in my friend's chair over here. This ability is super cool to utilize and makes the gameplay go from complete chaos to calculated strategy. Having a level of strategy like this when you already have tons of different weapons and stage hazards gives every player a certain permutation that everyone can enjoy. At the end of each level you get scored based upon how many combos you pulled off, how many tricks you did, and how many people you killed dead. And if you strategize thoroughly you'll get a much higher payoff. This gives the levels some serious replayability, but I never personally felt the need to go back and revisit them just to get a higher score. I've never been one for those types of games, just like in Sonic the Hedgehog or something along those lines. So do you see it? Do you mean how the game has a fantastic gameplay system built around it, but it falls flat on its characters and engagement? I mean, despite the super weird story and the unconnected environments, each level still brought a ton of fun to the table. I mean, I didn't have a lot of fun with it, but I could see where someone might. I, I mean, if that's what you're asking for, I think I do see it, my yellow friend. Of course not, you idiot. I mean the message that if you blindly submit to a banana like me, you'll get everything you could have ever wanted. I don't think that's what the theme of it is. Trust me, man. Just do whatever I say, and you'll get anything you want. <laughs> He didn't provide snacks!